A few years ago, here in London, I launched one of the first, world's first Internet of Things data platforms designed to make it as easy as possible for people to share real-time data from connected objects and sensors around the world. At the time, it was actually very difficult to talk about the Internet of Things, but the platform producing millions of data points per day eventually became a kind of global uh, platform. It proved early market demand for the Internet of Things and was ultimately acquired by LogMeIn, a US software company, in 2011. Um, with my latest initiative, I'm still trying to achieve a similar vision, a world of connected objects and sensors sharing real-time data, uh, but with a very different approach now. Because now it's easier to talk about the Internet of Things. You probably have in mind something like the Nest thermostat or Philips remote control lights or perhaps the Fitbit exercise monitor, exercise tracker. But all of these things have a one-to-one -one relationship, one person, one device, or maybe one family, one device. And I want to talk instead about many-to-many -many connections in the Internet of Things. I want to talk about the fact that we can use the Internet of Things to make decisions together, that we can use the Internet of Things to make sense of our homes and our neighborhoods and our cities together. And I want to talk about the fact that it's already here. It's just a little bit hard to find. So if you're concerned about air quality today in your neighborhood, chances are somebody else near to you is also concerned about air quality. They've already installed an air quality monitor. They've connected it to the web. And they're making that data available to others to make use of. But the problem is you will not find it. Google is not set up to index that kind of device. It's not set up to return an air quality monitor in its search results. And so that's why we launched Thingful.net. This is very slow. <laughs> uh, can we have the next slide? Not that one. This is, <laughs> this is why we launched Thinkful.net, a presentation tool. No. Um, <laughs> this is why we launched Thinkful.net, a search engine for the Internet of Things. We index millions of devices across the world from dozens of different Internet of Things networks and data infrastructures across the data spectrum. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to find the data and devices that you are entitled to find and make use of and for owners of those devices to help make their devices discoverable. I have no phone on me this time, so I don't know where that's coming from. So if you're concerned about air quality, you might not know about the AQICN global network of sensors. You might not know that Intel has deployed air quality monitors in your city. You might not even know about the Air Quality Egg citizen sensing initiative. But Thinkful indexes all of these, so when you search for air quality, you can find the one that's nearest to you or the most useful to you, and you can click through to the original data source, go and get the real-time data, and in many cases, actually contact and ideally collaborate with the owner of that device. If it's not air quality, then perhaps it's radiation in Germany, or earthquakes in California, or wave height in the Pacific, or if you're in the Caribbean, perhaps it's a shark. All of these things are generating real-time data that you can track, you can keep tabs on, you can add them to your watch list, and you can get notifications on them uh, as you need to. Or it might be that you are a software developer or business that has a unique algorithm that needs data from others. So we're building a decentralized data discovery and conversion framework. It's going to be deployed for Cambridgeshire County Council. And it's for an app that's going to help advise people whether to go by car, by bus, by walking, or by cycle to get to work. In order to do that, it needs access to air quality data, weather data, traffic data, transportation data, and even bike share availability data. Now, all of this data is coming from different data providers. And depending on the route, on the fly, those data providers will be completely different. It's a very complex problem, but we've worked out how to enable the data owners to retain total control of their data, but still make it discoverable, and for data clients to access that data on the fly in the easiest way while still getting that data directly from source. So the point is that we're not 
just building a search engine for the Internet of Things, and we certainly don't expect to be the only search engine for the Internet of Things. What we're trying to do is balance the discoverability with entitlement so that data owners retain full control over what happens to their data, who can find it, who can make use of it, what terms and conditions are applied, and in some cases, compensation that might be applied for use of that data, while still making it discoverable. So we're building a kind of framework and a business model that rewards and incentivizes openness, but does not absolutely require it. And that means enabling all the kind of real-time data discovery, transaction, and secure data sharing that's fundamental to an open internet of things. So over the next few months, our priority is to work with data providers. We're working with local authorities, with businesses, with developers. And if you have data and you're serious about making it available across data verticals across different industry verticals, and we want to work with you, uh, please come and talk with me. I'll be in the startup studio uh, at about 2 o'clock. Thank you very much.